Good everyone, and welcome back to Napoleon Total War with the Eras mod. Last time around we had kind of a disaster, as nothing really was gained or lost, as uh, Ordino tried to take on Copenhagen. That didn't go too well. Now, I've been able to do a few turns and prepared something better. So, for now, the rest of um, the uh, nations in uh, on the I was about to say in the United Kingdom but you know the these good the units here the nations here they are safe right now we don't need to have the Polish army there so the Polish army has been moved and is now set to land in Denmark to attack Copenhagen and they'll make sure that this time we have enough troops to follow up any battle that takes place here. I also have um, the guard army which was turned up from Paris on the Mortimer. So we've got five units of old guard and it has two um, uh, artillery pieces from the old guard as well plus a l large amount of Trillier Chasseur of the guard. So a really potent army then plus the very experienced uh, Polish army ready to land. So hopefully we'll be able to take Denmark out in this video. But in between getting to this point, there's been a, a quite a lot of battles. Most of them have been naval, but there has been a few land battles as well. So I have prepared a... Uh, a montage, you know, even Rocky had a montage, and now I've made one of the battles that took place in between. So, let's go ahead and take a look at that.
And now we're back. It feels like I'm a talk show host and I'm doing. And now we're back from commercial. It wasn't a commercial. There was a lot of people dying there, um, which I guess could be commercial. A really bad one for I don't know muskets. Jonathan's muskets. Uh, they kill people, obviously. Um, anyways, the battles that you saw there was this one against the Prussian army, so the Prinslau farmlands. Then we also had a battle here, which is the Battle of Linz, which uh, is the banking house right here, but the fight took place closer to the bridge. We also had that one Austrian ship. We actually met that ship somewhere f far away here, uh, but it counted as, it called itself the Battle of Genoa. But I think I met the ship somewhere around here. Um, so that's a little bit odd. Then the second naval battle, which was actually the battle against the, the Danish Navy, and that was down here, I believe. Um, they they had been then moved out of the port of Wismar, and they were sitting down here. And I was able to corner them and destroy them there. And then the final one was where I aided Naples outside the, the port here. Um, and those were the battles. Really what it was to do is, against the Prussians it was to open up this way. Now it's been closed again by another army that's set up here. Um, and then, since the Austrians have so many armies, I decided there was a bridge here. I was going to be able to get a bridge battle out of that, destroy them, and potentially open up, uh, and hopefully the Austrians weren't going to be able to build a new army in time, like they are overextended, I'm hoping. They have been moving more and more troops over to the Bohemian region, so I'm hoping at some point that I could probably take Napoleon and break, I can actually break through here right now. Does this this has a fort, unfortunately, and it's a large army. But break. Oh yeah. Um. I also, in between, decided to further my experiment by giving away technologies which the lower populace don't like, and I've been giving a few of them to the Austrians to the point where you can see there's quite a lot of unhappiness here. Uh, some of it is due to the war weariness, but clamor for reform because of industrialization and so on, has led to the populace not being too happy here, even with a full stack present. So hopefully we could, we could uh, foment revolutions behind the enemy's lines. That, you know, that would never backfire, that's never backfired on anyone to uh, send in, you know, um, I guess, socialists or communists to rally the working people against the old order. That has definitely not turned around and bitten someone in the arse previously. We'll be the first ones to do it. Um, so yeah, we've been fermenting. Uh, now this is the prime example because this is the only example that I've been able to get this to happen to. Um, Hopefully, maybe we can get more as we go along. The Prussians seem a lot better at repression than the Austrians. Um, but that's uh, that's a possibility there. So, And I've been gathering more and more armies in this region just because, of course, the Austrians are advancing slowly, but they are advancing towards the fort. Oh yeah, there was a fort battle, I forgot, in the... There wasn't just this battle here, there was the Battle of Dresden as well, but I think you know where Dresden is on the map. So there was another uh, Prussian army that attacked here. I think it was... There were two of them, actually, that turned up. Um, and I sally, actually sallied forth to attack them, so the battle was actually a, lo a loss because I wasn't able to win the battle. However, the army that was laying the siege was got, got mauled so badly uh, that they were forced to uh, retreat after that. And so this was the reinforcement army that was stationed behind the one that was sieging. So this is what's left of the Prussians that were there. Um, 
I actually just I I just saw this opportunity right now. What I think I would be able to do then is I would po possibly be able to go in with Napoleon, take this castle, and then pay uh, the Austrians off for a piece, and so they're holding. Sort of in mainland Europe, or main Europe, or cent central Europe, that's what we're going to call it, right? Because that's what it is. In central Europe would only be this, and then they would be relegated to, you know, the vampire hills and whatever crap this is. Right. With that, we're going to go ahead and uh, give the Danish... Another run for their money. And, um... I don't know. Fighting at the castle... Are quite annoying battles. If the Danes were to attack me... I would be more happy with that. I'm gonna end turn. Just to see what happens. And then I might attack to drag the Danish out, so we can outresolve the castle instead, rather than having to fight a castle battle, um, because they take a lot of time and are quite arduous to do. So, with that said, let's go ahead and end turn, and then see what our enemies come up with. Well, would you look at that? The puddling furnace. That thing looks ugly. I'm sure the vo working classes love that. Another invention will heave off to the Austrians. I'm sure they'll be super happy about that. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, this is an area where I forgot I was able to recruit troops. So we're now recruiting troops from uh, Westphalian troops. That's going to take part in the German army. It's pretty good to sometimes just go or go to your army and then take a look at uh, what you can recruit. And suddenly you find, wait a minute, here's some German infantry that, um, that I missed that I can recruit. So that's pretty good. We're going to be sending those guys immediately to the German army right there. Currently, I put almost all the, uh, I put all the howitzers that I have recruited so far into this army as of now. Um, it's going to be quite a spectacular battle when I put these guys into action against the Austrians. Now, there are some of the German troops that are not that great. However, the Westphalian troops, I think, were pretty good. 55 for these, and I think the other ones, these guys, oh, they have 48. I thought they were better. Um, was it the Saxons that were better? No, they're 50. There's one of these that I th had pretty good. Yes, the, um, the Anhalt Battalions. They have 47. That's pretty good. Comparatively. Um, of course, the Old Guard has 75. Can't really compare with that. Um, did I send... Yes. Oh, no, this Navy which um, took part in the battle here, needs to go repair. Then I think this one will actually continue to hunt Austrians and we will continue to hunt or aid um, Naples as uh, we can see there's some Austrians here left. Currently they aren't blocking the port, they're just sitting there without any orders. But I have... A pretty good chance against all of these, especially then also I think as the they don't have any port to repair even if the AI would try and repair their ships they don't have any place to repair um, seems like the Austrians heard what I said about the castle, so they've moved troops in and um, now it's only minus two here let's see if we can actually Take a look at what that puddling furnace, what that would do. Um, do we have puddling furnace? There, puddling furnace. Minus two happiness. Um, it does make it easier for them to recruit artillery and stuff like that. And increase wealth. But the minus two happiness 
something they definitely don't need. So now this should be for... Yes! <laughs> they think they're able to manage the unhappiness of the region. I just keep giving them technologies to keep the uh, working classes unhappy. I wonder if I could do the similar thing. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Russians are actually more technologically advanced than me. Yeah. Um, so they I cannot work that angle with because they are already more technologically advanced than us. And that's because they've got so many technological centers compared to a lot of other nations. You would think that... No, the, Britain, the British only has one. Um, I think there's some other nation that has more to start off with anyways. Um, never mind that though. Let's go ahead and see if we can't deal with the Danish. This is actually the second attempt at doing this because as I moved the Polish army forward to put it at, in a better angle as I'm thinking of leading with the um, old guard army, um, the game actually crashed. So to make sure that doesn't happen again, I will go ahead and save. If this happens for a third time, I guess we, you guys won't see it and we'll focus on the battle against the Austrians instead when Napoleon has an opportunity at that fort. I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, I've tried attacking from a few different angles. Uh, seemingly as soon as I move this army, the battle cr crashes. This army is able to move as I move it to attack Copenhagen and lay the siege the game crashes. I um, also decided, you know what, maybe I'll try something bold and something that completely surprised you. So I took this army to attack the big fort here. That crashed as well. Um, the only one that has been able to get to work is Napoleon attacking here. So I guess that's the battle we're doing right now. The further you get along the campaign, the more crashes there are. Luckily though, we're hopefully not that far away from victory. I need another three regions. And I guess uh, since we've already uh, upset the populace here, it's uh, our time to liberate them. Since we've already had a fight around uh, Copenhagen, I, get, I guess I think what I'll have to do... Um, to attack Copenhagen here is I will actually have to w have one army retreat and when the Danes feel they have the advantage they will attack and then I will fight good battle just as last time but this time around we will have the second army then ready to come across and actually secure victory uh, entirely. And also, since I've brought in the Guard Army, it could be that the Guard Army on its own is able to break the two Danish armies. But, um, seems to be, there's probably going to be quite a workaround to get to that. So, I'm going to take Napoleon and then strike here. It's a difficult battle because there's, it's infantry heavy. So, it's going to be difficult to complete this battle. But we'll try. So with that, let's go ahead and have a Napoleon. Napoleon? Go ahead and attack at Olmutz. <laughs> Did you think he was going to walk that way? No, he just walked straight through here. He's a master of maneuver, fellows. The Danish are sleeping. And the, uh, the Austrians are sleeping in the farmhouse. So we're looking at an army close to 10,000. Austrians are going to go rolling down on Napoleon's 3,500. I might have taken um, a little bit too much water over my head, but we'll see how we will be able to break these forces. Interesting enough, this turns out to be yet another battle of Moscow, even though I've never been close to the town. Um, the Austrians coming through Moscow um, is marching kind of spread out. 
there's some concentration here close to town which um, I'm hoping to take advantage of by specifically aiming some of my old guard guns down through here hoping to bounce shots through there um, I think both batteries could actually be firing this way uh, I've deployed the skirmisher up front the idea is not to sort of hold the enemy but to fire first and then retreat and then have the enemy follow them into uh, more dangerous positions I was hoping just to kind of form right around the high hill here but we've got kind of a sister hill right here that I need to hold off uh, right to start anyways um, um, once it, we, it becomes um, that it's unable for us to hold this then we will pull back sort of more to this side where we've got a wall I think there's a wall now, there's a hedgerow, we've got wall here anyways and the woods um, as defense right I think we're about to exchange fire with some Austrian troops and with the delay in the sound I realize the sound channels are set wrong right so this unit right here is gonna get fired from both these units not optimal but they will be able to fire upon them All right we lost seven and they lost like what six seven we lost ten we lost more than they did all right since we're actually fighting these guys right here that's where that gun will be aiming we'll pull those guys back right now we're able to fire there hopefully that will go well Even though I'm in skirmish formation, they are uh, killing more of me than I am of them. We'll try and drag them here into uh, killable positions. Um, heavy cavalry ready to sweep in. Alright, continue to fall back. This one though is okay for now. Although it's more and more... Actually, now that's a perfect target. Are you gonna have to pull back now? There's so many of them coming on here. I don't know if that... This is an optimal fire angle. Was kind of daunting ordering forward the unit into this given the amount of troops that are coming that way. Uh, you can redraw further. I actually lost a lot more troops than I thought I would. You could probably sit in front, actually. And these guys could shoot over you. And if they continue to march this way, I would do this, have ordered you up there and you along the wall. Alright, we never really got the shots that I wanted there. Good. That looked good. Are there... These guys are definitely gunning for the light troops here. These have yet to fire back. Speed up the fire here. Alright, now the guards. Firing here as well. We're gonna fire a little bit here before... Let's not stand away with this guard unit. Oh, they're just walking straight into the... Oh, my... We're shooting our own unit here. Pull back. We are getting fired up the flank, which is not great. We've already lost 40 men. 
Unit will pull back. You will stay though, but I will order up Izzy's guards. Why aren't you guys firing? Because they don't actually have a good uh, angle to fire from. Alright, light troops pull back behind the line. And they just cleared Forkum. Alright, Forkum, open fire again. There's a risk here, I feel like, firing into my own troops. I'm gonna hold fire. Getting um, heavily fired upon. This this unit's getting fired upon quite a bit. I'm gonna pull those two back, and I'm gonna add on the light troops onto this side. The enemy is now coming very close here. So we could be within canister range soon enough. We're doing tons of damage on these. Why aren't you firing? But you need to hold fire. I mean, I get it that Forkham fired you up the back, but you don't have to fire up the back of him. Seems like a lot of fire or a lot of my casualties here being uh, done by my own making. We just slaughtered this attack, which is great. But all of this need to be halted as well. Look at all of that. Let's make sure none of that gets home. I'm gonna release the Mamluks. Hold fire, switch to canister. And then the canister will uh, hopefully deal with those guys. Have the two lights set up here. Walking through each other, not optimal. Right, the, uh, they will go through for come for now. We'll do it like this. You will drop that formation and come in between there. There we go. The Mamluk's gonna get released and destroy all of that. And these guys are walking in to Old Guard and Canister Fire. Forkum is in bad shape. Oh, you're in bad shape now. Alright, pull back. It's sort of the back of the hill here. So there's no optimal uh, firing angle. Yeah, we're breaking all of this as well. Uh, these troops need to be dealt with. The Mamluks are having field day, cutting that all, all that out. They haven't lost enough men, I feel like, this unit. To warrant the uh, Lancer charge as of yet. But I don't want all of this to get away. There's a lot of them setting up here now. And while the wall is covering us, to a certain extent, it could definitely be better. thing is also to remember that there is uh, a second army on the way. You know what, I think the Lancers might have it even if it's not the greatest of... Uh Ooh, the Austrians are coming out hard here. Um, Let's push in the uh, heavy cavalry, Draghi Chen and his troops. Switch to round shot. The lancers will uh, come around and then strike. You will then advance. 
you will advance. Okay, we've got one of the units rallying. I think we'll focus artillery fire there. Or you will focus here. So 93rd, the Trilliers and Forkum is holding strong. Oh, <laughs> Luckily, though, the Austrians are kind of caught unaware here. Because I forgot that I had that angle going for me. Right, the Lancers were able to break that. Artillery focus in there. You will... there. That's a target. Heavy cavalry breaks through. Breaks through this one. The two old guard units will go up here. Although I think the the uh, cavalry on its own will charge down all of that. All right, the lances. Go, lances, go. And then the mamluks will come in from one angle. Heavy cavalry continues through there. The guard comes up to aid in breaking down the enemy over here, and uh, they're all in a rout. I might, if it weren't for the fact that the bloody general is hiding over there, I would have broken the first army with the second one never turning up. Unfortunately, that does not seem to be the case right now. Although, as of right now, I'm not seeing any of the um, enemy reinforcements turning up at the edge of the map. Napoleon has pulled it off. A stunning victory. The problem now, though, is that we have not been able to drag out. As much as I uh, like the fact that we um, have uh, more or less defeated this first army without having the reinforcement army even turn up, is the problem that the entire thing was to drag out the army out of the castle so that I didn't have to fight the uh, castle battle. However, I will make sure that this army, that I won't have to fight any of these troops again. There's one unit that's going away. There's another one, and then we have one infantry all the way over here. Seemingly, I guess they were delayed by the rain. The roads were uh, so muddy that the second army has not been able to arrive in time. And Napoleon... Um, I think we have a strong an ar army enough to conduct the uh, siege battle, though. Wonderful victory. We were able to um, get the Austrians into the positions we wanted. Absolutely annihilated them. Wonderful victory.
I spoke too soon. The second army has, in fact, arrived. As we can see here, Austrian heavy cavalry is making a charge towards my light infantry. Getting broken on the charge, though. We've got another heavy cavalry there. Unfortunately, my heavy cavalry is tired as they are trying to retreat towards the line. Um, not a great situation. I'm going to order Falcom to stop. And I'm going to order you to stop. And hopefully that, plus the fact that the artillery is now focused in. Shit. This is uh, fr risk of, high risk of friendly fire here. Alright. Turn the guns, face something else. I thought the battle was over. But then the enemy's heavy cavalry has arrived. Then I know where the enemy turns up from. Over there. It could be, maybe, advisable to advance on this. And then fight them on a smaller area there. Because now this is out of line. At the same time, a lot of my troops... Or at least a lot of the cavalry is tired at this point. So I kind of need to rest them up. Um, I did try to hit these with artillery. That has not really worked. The Dutch troops in this Grenadier will hold this while we kind of reorganize now. We do have walls here. So let's organize along these walls instead then. Then these three will deal with that one. We've got new walls here. Cavalry ordered to hold here. You will hold here. Um, the lances are fresh and encouraged. Good. Wait, 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 wait. Hold. Oh, they're, they're moving. Too fast to the side. Turn to prepare. You will form square. You will speed up. You will hold fire. You will fire at will. And as soon as ready, the Austrians decided to charge too early. And they are tired as they reach our lines. You will also hold fire. Wonderful. The fire has started over here. Um, while I do like harassing the enemy's cavalry with my guns, we're going to turn the focus, or at least one of the guns is going to turn its focus over here. I'll speed you up. This one's going straight for the guns in the center. However, they're already broken. This is our worst attack I've seen in a long time, even for the AI. The Austrians getting mowed down as they advance. And this is supposed to be the commander of the first fight. No wonder I was able to uh, get such a glorious victory where uh, this is the commander. Never even takes to the fight. I guess he decides that the honor demands that he actually do join the fight. And uh, now he's going to get killed for it. Right, the Austrians are lining up out here. I've ordered these guys to be... Uh, they'll move into light formation later on here. But for now... They'll hold us this, and um, right, you will fire at one of these. Actually, maybe the grenadiers might be good to break them. Right now he's gone. Since this is the since this, I was really keen on killing all of them, but that's the reinforcement army. That's not going to be that important. Now we need to focus on this army. This one 
is the one that I every unit of these that don't leave that I'm able to make sure that they don't leave is one that's not going to take part in the siege that's going to come after this. I think at this point most of the Austrians have made it onto the field and the first musket fire is about to be exchanged here as we got Christian Matthias, Old Guard, facing off against Austrian uh, line infantry. We want to make sure that we can uh, make sure that we got a good advantage here. So currently this angle is not really attacked so I'm bringing in more troops here. We also have Nick Saruto and Izzy coming in to aid here. And the guns are firing at this location as well. Uh, Draghi Shen's heavy cavalry could be used as well. Currently, um, even though we've been able to lay fire on these while they have been uh, not laying fire down upon us. As soon as they stop and start to fire, uh, it could go really bad. However, looks like they're not going to do that. Oh shit, I'm shooting into my own men. Fire on the next one instead. Get that counter charge bonus. And then break them. Alright. Quickly now, quickly now. Okay, they are about to come into fight here. Which I kinda missed. Into light. Back here. Then we push the um, lances back. We don't want to have them take that much fire. Uh, seemingly, artillery is not really needed on that angle. I feel like it's possibly gonna be more on this side where we're gonna need artillery since the enemy is currently I'm not sure what they're aiming that the the units that are coming down are aiming for but currently the um, Austrian units are just running a gauntlet here of uh, absolutely Getting cut down. I think though, these are the troops that I don't want to leave in great mass. I'm gonna get the um, Mamluks to go around and catch these. Oh, they are gonna come back for a second go at that. Right, Izzy is gonna join in there. I think they tested the defenses here with the two first one. The next group here is going to be the one. Now the yeah, now they've started to return fire. Um, the lights are facing some fire from here, and they're about to face fire from this unit. Okay, the lights will retreat. I think the guard already. We'll draw the line like that. And the lights will set up like that. Alright, come on, Izzy. Get your shots in. And then we get Nick on the flank. And the heavies, Draghi Shen, Mamluk's gonna go around, gonna make sure that no one escapes. Um, they're attacking on such a wide front that um, they're not really gonna be able to uh, achieve any good attacks. Okay, now we're getting fired in the flank here. 
The 93rd need to pull back. Get behind the wall. Alright, we're breaking units coming through here. As they're being funneled through into three units that are prepared. Um, as much as I would want to continue firing on this, clearly this is the best target over here. Firing up through these as they're now coming against this line behind the uh, walls. Let's see if I can get the Dutch veterans in here. The old guard is currently not firing. But it sounded like they started firing right there. Right, they continue on. Nixaruto has a problem because this, these guys coming up in their flank. Or coming in from a flank where all of these guys are now aiming for this. Um, it's probably going to lose some men due to that. The heavy cavalry is going to move in. There's a risk here if these guys actually get through and start firing up the flank of these that they could break them. They've got like a reserve line lining up here. Maybe I should push more troops forward here to attack. Or actually what I should do. So I should pull this line further back. Drag these more forward so this guy can aid in. Oh yeah, they're... What are these guys doing? And the 93rd is just gonna almost break just by having those guys run past here. We're gonna redraw this line. Heavy cavalry is around. You will continue to the back there. Like they keep a lot of troops in the back here, not pushing them into the fight. Alright, Christian Mathia. The thing is, these units are so small. If the enemy just fires back, um, they're gonna be gone. We're gonna have to push in more, so I'm gonna push Issy there, and I'm gonna bring in the heavy cavalry to wipe this out so these guys can start to envelop this right here. Looks like Nick might be able to fire ones before the heavy cavalry goes in. I think the heavy cavalry should be able to do it. Nick will go through. Alright, we have broken one over there. Was that the one we were aiming for? I need to continuously aim for these guys up here. Just because the weaker forces are on this side. They've completely abandoning attacking it, attacking this side now. So I will move forward more harder on this side. And the lances go up there. Heavy cavalry can swing out here. Alright. Draggy Shen was able to murder this unit completely. You should go after this one now. Move through. Nick will take the furthest angle in between these houses. Let's focus all artillery fire down on this one. One of them still has a uh, barrage. So we'll activate that. Alright, this line performing really well. The lances are now out. On the flank, Jipilu is ready to strike. Once given the order, the Austrians are moving towards my artillery position. Draghi Shen continues to chase down the retreating troops here. The uh, Mamluks making sure no one leaves the field. Oh, they're coming right for the guns. They're going to try and climb the hill, are they? Hold fire, switch to canister. They're going straight for Napoleon, are they? Well, with a whiff of great shot, I will clear the field. Long live the old guard. We 
Okay, maybe not. You can sit behind the buildings, actually. Alright, Nick, deploy. You will be a little bit more bold moving forward here. The Lancers will attack here. Artillery will continue to pound the center as it's losing cohesion. Alright, those guys died. Let's have both units come in on this angle. Lancers strike the Grenadiers. And then we'll team up on that unit. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you win a battle. Napoleon style. Light cavalry follows. Heavy go after these. Lancers. I think this unit might have turned to fire on the Lancers. No, it has not. Let's end the battle then. Let's end the battle. Cavalry will go in and end this battle. Artillery, focus in there. The 5th Heavy Cavalry goes in and attacks there. Alright, I want a general advance of the infantry. Alright, they're all broken now except one. The artillery will be ordered to hold fire. And there we go. I have achieved a stunning victory. Napoleon has shown the world once more why he is the Emperor of the French.
And here we have the result of a battle. Of a battle? More like THE battle. We deployed 3,500 men against close to 10,000 Austrians. 9,700. We ended up losing 1,200 men, so about a third of our force was lost, with the remaining 2,200 men. However, for the Austrians, it's kind of a bit worse. Out of 9,700 men, 8,300 are left on the field. 1,300 men remain after the battle. Um, noted here, we did have some friendly fire during the battle. If you compare what the enemy killed to what we lost, it looks like we killed about 200 of our own men. Um, but the enemy seem to have done quite a bit worse. Were they almost killing what, like 600 of their own? Not entirely sure the exact math there. Mamluks were the ones to chase down the most. They ended up losing five men during the battle. Probably due to exhaustion of trying to cut down all the Austrians. Um, I imagine, though, um, that will say that they'll probably take quite a few of them prisoners, rather than them 90 men slaughtering 1,100, close to 1,200 men. Uh, next up is their lancers. They ended up losing 17 men, killing 868. Killed and captured, let's say. Um, and then we have the cuirassiers. Followed by a grenadier unit. Non entirely sure which this one is. Remaining 111 men. Could we one of the named grenadiers? Uh, followed by cuirassiers. Followed by artillery. Eh? Followed by the 93rd. So on. Here's uh, 80 85th. That's a named one. Um... Easy, right here, losing 100, killing 280, and so on as we go through. Napoleon, killing no one, lazy bastard. Let's see how many remain to take charge of the fort after this battle. After the battle then, we have what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 broken down infantry units with 3 cuirassiers and 1 line infantry holding the fort. Three? Plus then uh, the armed mob which spawned quite a lot of them inside. Um, right, this should be easily dispelled. The key will then be to deploy on this side of the field and make sure that these guys do not get in the fort. And then uh, pummel the fort to pieces and capture the flag. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and do just that. What is there to say? I'm lucky enough that the enemy is overconfident. Oh, look at there. There's where the battlefield was. Ah, huh. cool. Um, I'm lucky that the enemy decides that they're so confident that they're going to charge out with the armed citizenry. And as you can see, they have been slaughtered everywhere. And we're now um, getting on top of the castle here. And I'm going to clear off the walls. There's two units here, there's two down here, and then one cavalry unit. There was three, but stray cannon shots have destroyed the rest of those units. So, uh, as soon as Izzy's grenadiers is, I've gone ahead and uh, cleared this part of the wall. The gates will be ours, and the troops will pour in in uh, a tremendous amount. Oh, artillery is firing on my own troops over there. Not great. Once that's done, Victory has been achieved, and it's another glorious victory for Napoleon.
Hey, here's victory. We deployed 2,000 men against 3,000 defenders in the castle. I lost 165 compared to 3,000 enemy lost for the enemy. Only 246 remain. Um, wonderful. Highest killers goes to different Grenadier units. Plus the um, 85th E and so on. Wonderful victory. And with that... Olmerts, Morovia, falls to me. Wonderful. I wonder... Probably not. Looks like I'm only going to be able to get landware from here. This isn't great. Uh, replenishment rate is okay. Now, of course, the problem here is that this opens up the road to Vienna. So, um, the Italian army under the Dutch under Dutch leadership is going to be moved to... If I move to the bridge, that might trigger a battle. So, I'm going to move him just to Vienna. To protect that. But another territory falls to us. As the Austrians think they will conduct an offensive on us through here. We are able to slip. Napoleon is able to slip through. Gain a decisive victory over a force three times his size. And then after that directly march on the castle. Storm it. And take it. Wonderful. Anyways, there's been enough uh, for one video, I'm sure. I'll try to figure out what to do with Copenhagen. And uh, as we go on, we soon will be victorious here. As we'll achieve um, the amount of regions needed. So, I will leave you with that. Um... Right, hopefully you guys enjoy this, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.